welcome you to the fifth chapter of Hornbill, The Ailing Planet, The Green Movement's Role by Nani Palkhiwala. Ailing Planet, what does the title tell you? Yes, ailing. Ailing means it is in poor health. And even if I go on, before I go on rather, don't you think the planet that we right now exist on, is it really very healthy? Yes, you think with all the combinations and permutations of destructions that are going all around, you think it is healthy? You have the answer right within you. But let me tell you what he has in store for us. Let's talk about him first. Nani Ardishir Palkiwala was educated at St. Xavier's College in Bombay. At college, he earned a master's degree in English literature. He enrolled at Government Law College, Bombay, where he discovered that he had a gift for unraveling the intricacies of jurisprudence. As in, what do you mean by this is, here he got to the depth of it. He knew he could actually, you know, remove the knots, you know, I mean, law is all about it, right? So he knew he could go to the depth, the philosophy of law. He was an excellent barrister at his time. Wow, that was really nice. Now, what has he woven for us in this chapter, The Ailing Planet? Let's watch. More than ever, the planet Earth is losing its vitality and freshness. Due to human development activities, our Earth has become highly polluted, highly irreparable and highly damaged. That's true. There's no doubt about it. We have taken out petroleum, coal and a lot of natural resources from the earth. We have removed more than half of the world's vegetation and emitted a large quantity of carbon and a lot of other chemicals. We have done that. We are actually exhausting all our natural resources. That is what we have been doing. We have destroyed marine life and made rivers dry. We, we the great humans. Moreover, our greed for more and more wealth resulted in depleting the protective ozone layer and invited all harmful rays to the Earth's surface. We have done that. It's totally our greed, our selfishness that has brought us to the situation where the ozone layer has literally nearly disappeared and because of which we have all the ultraviolet rays, all the harmful rays coming to the Earth's surface. Besides, we have brought out a great imbalance between humans and the other species of the Earth. Yes, we have done a lot of wrong. Today, this pandemic 2020 that you are, that we all are facing is the result of what? It is the result. I mean, it is basically, uh, we have actually fiddled with nature. Yes, we have done that. Today, nature is giving it back in manifold. It is giving it, uh, you know, if we have done one, it is giving back in 10. Literally, every action that we have taken against the nature, you know, it has given a totally, I mean, it's a big reaction to it. Yeah. So, obviously, we have to face the consequences. One, rec one cannot recall any movement in world history which has gripped the imagination of the entire human race so completely and so rapidly as the green movement which started nearly 25 years ago. So you cannot recall any movement in the world. There's no such movement that has come up in the world which has gripped the imagination. Gripped as in it has taken a firm hold of it. Yeah. The imagination of the entire human race so completely and so rapidly. Nobody, ha nobody has taken that. It is this green movement which actually came up 25 years ago has taken that into consideration. In 1972, the world's first nationwide green party was founded in New Zealand. Since then, the movement has not looked back, has not looked back as in it has never been reconsidered. It has always kept moving on successfully. We have shifted one hopes irrevocably from the mechanistic view 
to a holistic and ecological view of the world. Yes, we hope that we are shifting, you know, right from in a way that cannot be reversed, right from there, from the mechanistic view, mechanistic view as in a view that ignores the emotional realities in people's lives. Now, this is what we are doing from the mechanistic view to a holistic and ecological in the sense, a view that considers all the aspects of the earth's environment and focuses on use of the future generations. So we need that shift. We have shifted one hopes, we really hope. We have shifted right from there to something brighter with this green wave. It is a shift in human perceptions as revolutionary as that introduced by Copernicus who taught mankind in the 16th century that the earth and the other planets revolved round the sun. Now this started then. It was a shift in the, in the human's perceptions. The thing was uh, that time the human had a different mind process. It was a different thought process. So this was brought, this change in the thought process was brought in in the 16th century. It was a revolutionary as in it was, it caused a dramatic change. It brought in a big change introduced by Copernicus who taught mankind in the 16th century that the earth and the other planets revolved around the sun. Now, for the first time in human history, there is a growing worldwide consciousness that the earth itself is a living organism. Now, initially, like the, he already said that the thought process was very different of the humans. So, it is for the first time that there is a growing worldwide consciousness in the sense, person's awareness or perception of something. The people all around the world became aware that the earth is self, itself is a living organism, an enormous being of which we are parts. We are parts of this entire being. It has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which need to be respected and preserved. Metabolic is referring or deriving from metabolism, the chemical uh, actions you know that are required to maintain certain cells. Yeah, so this is what it needs, its own metabolic needs and the vital processes which need to be respected and preserved. The earth has its own system that needs to be respected. It needs to be kept the way it is. It needs to be preserved. The earth's vital signs reveal a patient in declining health. Now, the vital signs that are coming from the earth, what is it actually showing you? It is showing you that a patient who, whose health is actually declining, it is going worse and worse. We have begun to realize our ethical obligations to be good stewards of the planet and responsible trustees of the legacy to future generations. What is it trying to tell you? See, now we are realizing that it is our ethical obligations, it is our actual moral duty, it, these are our commitments to be good stewards. Stewards as in a person employed to look after something. So we are basically responsible as citizens, we are responsible for the, you know, maintaining the health of the planet, right? and responsible trustees of the legacy that is something inherited or handed down by the predecessors to the future generations. Now, this is what we leave the planet, how we leave the planet, what we got from our ancestors and today, what are we handing over to our future generation basically lies in our own hands. So it all depends what are you planning to give it to them. You know, that really matters. So being responsible citizens, you have to really take care of it. The concept of sustainable development was popularized in 1987 by the World Commission on Environment and Development. Now here what they are talking about is the concept of sustainable development, development which actually can be sustained, which can be really kept up. It was popularized in 1987. It became really famous, this concept, by what? Who did that? By the World Commission on Environment and Development. They said, now this is what we are supposed to do. They brought in that concept in 
1987. It became more famous then. Now, in its report, it defined the idea as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their needs. Now, this is something which is very beautifully put, very selfless. By selfless, what I mean? Opposite of selfish. Yeah, Selfish is when you think about yourself and selfless is first you think about the others. So, this is a very selfless thought. It is a thought about others, not about yourself. Right? So, what is that selfless thought? Development that meets the needs of the present. You develop that much that you, you know, you meet the need of the present but without compromising, compromising as in causing harm to, without causing any harm to the ability of the future generations to meet their needs. Now, we should not harm their problem, their things. We should not actually create a problem in their abilities. We cannot steal it from them. And, you know, just keep ourselves well developed. We cannot do that. We have to maintain that balance that we also can meet our needs and so can the future generations. That is, without stripping the natural world of resources, future generations would need. You are not going to finish those natural resources which will be required by the future generation. You cannot do that. You cannot be so selfish and so greedy. You cannot be so money-minded that no matter what, irrespective of anything else, today we need to take care of ourselves. That should not be the thought process. It definitely should not be the case. Now, in the zoo at Lusaka, Zambia, there is a cage where the notice reads. Now, this is really interesting. You must really pay attention. Where the notice reads, what's the notice? The world's most dangerous animal lives over there. Inside the cage, there is no animal but a mirror where you see yourself. The world's most dangerous animal, human. Thanks to the efforts of a number of agencies in different countries, a new awareness has now dawned upon the most dangerous animal in the world. Now that awareness has gone worldwide, it has spread, it has actually come into existence. Why? Because a lot of efforts from, of a number of agencies in different countries, they have brought this awareness, it has dawned, that means now they have realized, it has come to them. Upon the most dangerous animal in the world, we the humans. He has realized the wisdom of shifting from a system based on domination to one based on partnership. He says he realized the wisdom, the wisdom as in the quality of being wise. How do you play? How do you do that? You play wise. Why? How? Because you need to shift from a system which is based on domination. Stop dominating. Stop overpowering. Exercise or power or influence over someone or something. So you need to have that shift. Wisdom lies in having the shift from domination to the based on, to the one based on partnership. It's not me. It's not I. It's we. It's partnership. Scientists have catalogued about 1.4 li million living species with which mankind shares the earth. Now, it's not just we who are the living species. There are about 1.4 million living species with which mankind shares the earth. They have already listed it down. They have catalogued it. Estimates vary widely as regards the still uncatalogued living species, biologists reckon that about three to a hundred million other living species still languish unnamed in ignominious darkness. He says it is not just 1.4 million. There are still lot many more whom we are not even aware of. We are not familiar with. There are so many. They are the uncatalogued. They are not listed 
in the living species the biologists reckon they reckon as in they have a particular opinion that around 3 to 100 million other living species exist apart from these they still languish languish as in lack of vitality or they decrease in number unnamed they are not yet categorized in ignominious darkness as in without anyone's knowledge they are not to our knowledge they are not to our awareness so we don't know them but they do exist is what the biologists have to say one of the early international commissions which dealt inter alia with the question of ecology and environment was the Brandt Commission which had a distinguished Indian as one of its members Mr. L. K. Jha. Now here what he's saying is in the earlier international commissions which dealt with inter alia as in among other things which dealt with many other things among other things the question of ecology and environment ecology and environment is the relationship between the humans and its surroundings so that relation it was the with the question of ecology and environment was the Brandt commission which had a distinguished distinguished as in a very respected indian member that is mr l k ja he was with them the first Brandt report raised the question. Now, just watch this. Are we to leave our successors a scorched planet of advancing deserts, impoverished landscapes and ailing environment? Are we supposed to gift this to our future generation? What? You leave your successors with a scorched planet. Scorched planet as in a planet burning by fire. That's the planet. Of advancing deserts, increasing deserts. Why? Because no vegetation. There's nothing. There's nothing left. It's all barren land. Because all the, what do you say, the soil, all the rich vegetation that we had or we used to grow or we used to cultivate, everything is coming to a zero. So, they will be all large barren lands, nothing but deserts. Impoverished landscapes, as in poor landscapes with no mountains, no rivers, all dry rivers. There was nothing really good to look at. And ailing environment, ailing as in in poor health, the environment we are leaving, do you think it's really nice, it's healthy, do you think so? With all the pollution, all types of pollution all around, you think is it healthy, the environment? Not one bit. So this is the Brandt report that came from there, the very first report, they raised this question, are we actually planning to do this? Are we actually planning to give this to our future generation? That was the very first report that raised the question. Mr. Lester R. Brown, in his thoughtful book, The Global Economic Prospect, points out that the Earth's principal biological systems are four. Now, these are the four Earth's principal biological systems. What are they? They are fisheries, forests, grasslands and croplands. Fisheries are what? Places where fish are reared commercially. You know, they do it on a very commercial basis. So, you have fisheries, you have forests, you have grasslands and you have croplands. Four, uh, the principal biological systems. And they form the foundation. These four, found, uh, they form the foundation of the global economic system obviously you have a lot of income you have a lot these are your resources basically so you generate a lot of income through that so that is the reason they form the foundation of the global economic system now in addition to supplying our food these four systems they provide virtually virtually as in almost all the raw materials for industry except minerals and petroleum derived synthetics synthetics we know these are the artificial substances so they say that these four systems they almost give us everything everything uh, virtually all the raw materials for the industry whatever raw material the industry requires to operate yes they provide you with all of it except 
minerals and petroleum derived synthetics they don't give these artificial substances in large areas of the world human claims on these systems are reaching an unsustainable level a point where their productivity is being impaired impaired as in it is being damaged it has been weakened gradually it has happened in large areas of the world that's why they're saying this is the ailing planet large areas of the world the human claims it claims on all these systems on all majorly these four systems and they are reaching an unsustainable level a level which you cannot no longer maintain a point where their productivity is being damaged they are no longer able to produce the raw material they are no longer able to maintain that global economic uh, you know the foundation when this happens if this happens and when this happens fisheries collapse forests disappear grasslands are converted into barren wastelands and crop lands deteriorate this is exactly what is already happening aren't we facing it of course we are so now when this happens what all will happen see please keep a a very good connect with these you know uh, these four principal biological systems you can really talk about them so it, if it comes as a 3 to 4 marks uh, answer a question you can really answer them very well yeah so coming back to it so if these are impaired impaired as in if they are damaged what will happen when this happens the fisheries will collapse we know where they are red commercially the fishes that will collapse the forests will totally disappear there will be no forest left the grasslands are converted into barren wastelands barren as in infertile unable to produce any vegetation so these will be total barren waste lands they will no longer be useful and crop lands deteriorate as in they are becoming progressively worse they are literally getting back to worse in a protein conscious and protein hungry world overfishing is common every day these days the doctor tells you oh please consume a lot of proteins now everyone thinks that protein only comes from fish for those who are not non vegetarians it's easy for them and because of which the result of this has happened is there has been overfishing people want to consume more and more fish thinking that they want to keep their protein level really high this is what is happening overfishing is happening every day protein hungry world he calls it very nicely put up in poor countries the local forests are being decimated in order to procure firewood for cooking now what is happening in poor countries already there's hardly anything left it's already calling them poor the local forests which are there they are being decimated as in they are being reduced in number they are going on decreasing they are becoming less and less why because to procure firewood for cooking procure as in to obtain with a lot of effort now obviously they want that wood to you know uh, get fire at home for cooking now in some places firewood has become so expensive that what goes under the pot now costs more than what goes inside it oh very well put he says the money that you spend on the wood which you keep under the pot to light the fire that is way more expensive than the product which is in the pot which you are cooking that is cheaper what you are cooking is cheaper than the wood that you are using to light the fire to cook your food since the tropical forest is in the words of dr myers the powerhouse of evolution several species of life face extinction as a result of its destruction now what he's saying since the trop tropical forest is in the words of dr myers what is dr myers saying about the tropical forest he says it is the powerhouse the powerhouse as in a person or a thing of great power so this is the main power it is the powerhouse of evolution several species of life face extinction extinction as in they are becoming less the process of reducing to zero they are getting extinct as a result of its destruction 
obviously because it is going on getting destroyed this all is coming it is literally getting to extinction it is literally getting to zero all the species of life face extinction so a lot of problems coming up because of that it has been well said that forests precede mankind precede as in they come before in position or hierarchy before mankind deserts follow now first what they're trying to say tell you is first the forests then the mankind and then the deserts yeah the world's ancient patrimony of tropical forests is now eroding at the rate of 40 to 50 million acres a year that's a big destructing amount right the world's ancient patrimony patrimony sorry it's patrimony property inherited from father right so the world's ancient patrimony that we've got from there from our ancestors of tropical forests is now eroding at the rate it is literally going it is disappearing how fast at the rate of 40 to 50 million acres a year that's the measurement that you are using the unit of land that much is going it is literally going in a year do you understand 40 to 50 million acres and the growing use of dung dung we know the excrement of animals the growing use of dung for burning deprives the soil it deprives as in it prevents from having the soil of an important natural fertilizer because we are also burning off the dung right there it is depriving it is not letting the soil really it is preventing the soil uh, of an important natural fertilizer dung is a natural fertilizer now because we are using of that also the soil is getting it's not getting the natural fertilizer the world bank estimates that a five fold increase in the rate of forest planting is needed it is needed to cope with the expected fuel wood demand in the year 2000 now this they are talking of 2000 right now you can imagine what the situation might be 20 years from now they are talking about it was that bad they required now currently you can imagine the status of the same right they needed a five-fold increase in the rate of forest planting of course now there is a lot of awareness people have started growing trees a lot of things are happening a lot of movements have taken place so yes things are supposed to be getting really better james speth the president of the world resources institute said the other day we were saying that we are losing the forest at an acre a second but it is much closer to an acre and a half to a second now he said he said do you realize every second every second we are losing the forest at an acre acre was the unit of land right an acre is going but it's not that it's literally it's more closer to acre and a half it's not just one acre it's one acre and another half to a second it is going that bad that's what the president of the world resources institute was telling us he has literally said it so you can imagine it is really getting that worse article 48a of the constitution of india provides that the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country now here see when a lot of negativity happens something positive also comes along something comes to balance it yes things do deteriorate they do get spoiled they get destroyed but then to a certain level somewhere something arises and things get a little into balance so this is what happened when the article 48a of the constitution of india they said it they said that the state shall endeavor endeavor they will make an effort the state will make an effort to protect and improve the environment and safeguard the forest they will protect the forest and wildlife of the country but what causes endless anguish 
anguish as in pain or suffering is the fact that laws are never respected nor enforced in India. We are so very well aware of the fact, aren't we? For instance, the constitution says that casteism, untouchability and bonded labor shall be abolished, totally removed. But they flourish shamelessly. They still exist. They are in fact prospering even after 44 years of the operation of constitution. They still exist even after this law was passed 44 years of the in operation of the constitution. Yet it exists. A recent report of our Parliament's Estimates Committee has highlighted the near catastrophic depletion of India's forests over the last four decades. Now what are they trying to tell you is the report which came from the Parliament's Estimates Committee has they've highlighted the near catastrophic depletion as in the harmful reduction in number of something. The depletion of what? Of India's forests over the last four decades. India, according to reliable data, is losing its forests at the rate of 3.7 million acres a year. Now that's what the report tells you. Literally every year we are losing 3.7 million acres of forest. Large areas officially designated as forest land, designated as in they are legally assigned, okay, as forest land are already virtually treeless. You can see that there are no trees over there. The actual loss of forest is estimated to be about eight times the rate indicated by the government statistics. It is going eight times than what was actually given. You know, the, it has been indicated by the government statistics. You can see they are literally going without trees. They are going treeless. Now you look at this graph and you'll be shocked to know a three-year study using satellites and aerial photography conducted by the United Nations warns that the environment has deteriorated so badly that it is critical, it is serious in many of the 88 countries investigated. Now they have actually used satellites and aerial photography. With the help of those, they have found out that in many of 88 countries, this thing is getting worse and worse. It's getting critical, it's getting serious. There can be no doubt that the growth of world population is one of the strongest factors distorting the future of human society. Now, what is one of the major problems? What is it that is actually causing harm? It is the growth of the world population. It is one of the strongest factors distorting, literally ruining the future of the human society. It took mankind more than a million years to reach the first billion. Initially, it took them a million years to reach the first billion. That's the population. That was the world population around the year 1800. It took them million years to reach the first billion. By the year 1900, a second billion was added and the 20th century has added another 3.7 million. Do you see how it is going, the graph? This is how it's going. The present world population is estimated at 5.7 billion every four days. Every four days, mind it. The world population increases by 1 million. Do you even realize that figure? What are they telling you in every four days, okay? The world population increases by one million. Four days, one million. God, that can be really killing. Fertility falls as incomes rise. Education spreads and health improves. Now, what they're telling you is the fertility rate falls. 
if it falls because as the incomes rise, education spreads and health improves. Thus, development is the best contraceptive. Contraceptive, we all know it is something that prevents pregnancy. So, to, uh, the best contraceptive here is you have to make sure that awareness comes. The education spreads and the health improves. Only then will it work, right? The fertility rate will actually fall. Thus, development is the best contraceptive. But development itself may not be possible if the present increase in numbers continues. Four days, one million. Do you remember that? So if, the, if at this rate it's going to increase, it's going to happen, the development definitely may not be possible. The rich get richer and the poor beget children which condemns them to remain poor. The rich are getting richer, that's happening. The poor beget children, beget as in they bring about a child or they give birth to a child which condemns them. It literally punishes them to remain poor. Now, obviously, if they give birth to some uh, to a child, they have to bring up that child. They have to nurture that child. So, obviously, they are not going to get rich. They are going to spend money. More children does not mean more workers. Merely more people without work. Very deep. More children, if there are more children in the country, it does not mean that we have more workers. It's not like this. It is, in fact, more people without work. There will be much more unemployment. It is not suggested that human beings be treated like cattle and compulsorily sterilized. They should not be actually deprived of the ability to reproduce. That's not what they are trying to say. It is not suggested in any way. But there is no alternative to voluntary family planning without introducing an element of coercion. Coercion as in forceful persuasion. There is, uh, it is, there is no alternative actually to that, you know. So they have to do that without introducing an element of persuasion. It, it should come voluntary from the people themselves. The choice is really between control of population and perpetuation of poverty. Now, this is the choice they have to make. It is really between control of population, one, or the perpetuation of poverty as in the continuation or preservation of a situation. The poverty will keep, it will keep persisting, it will keep being there, it will remain. So, you have to basically make a choice. What do you want? You want to control the population or you want to live in poverty? That's for you to decide. The population of India is estimated to be 920 million today. More than the entire populations of Africa and South America put together. No one familiar with the conditions in India would doubt that the hope of the people would die in their hungry hutments unless population control is given topmost priority. Now, what are they saying is no one actually familiar with the conditions in India. You know what are the prevailing conditions, right? In India, they would doubt that the hope of the people would die. Whichever hope that they are living in, it would die in their hungry hutments. Hutments as in an, encamp uh, sorry, an encampment of huts where they are living. It would die there unless they control the population which is given topmost priority. For the first time in human history, we see a transcending concern. Transcending concern as in going beyond the limits. Now it is crossing every limit. So for the first time in human history, we are seeing that concern which is going beyond the limit. The survival not just of the people, but of the planet. It's not that only the people have to survive, but more importantly, the planet has to survive. So you have to think of it. We have begun to take a holistic view of the very basis of our existence. We need to understand how do we really need to live. The environmental problem does not necessarily signal our demise. It is not showing that we will die. Demise as in the death, the end. It is our passport for the future. 
Very well said. Now with this, with that environmental problem, if you really take care of it, right, it will be your passport to go to the future. It will be the passport that our future generation will actually live a good life on a healthy planet. The emerging new world vision has ushered in the era of responsibility. It has ushered as in it is marking the beginning of something. And what is that? It is the era of responsibility. It is the responsibility of each and every one of us to tackle this problem. It is a holistic view, an ecological view, seeing the world as an integrated whole rather than a dissociated collection of parts. You have to see the whole thing as one and not divided. It all has to come together. It has to be integrated as in the different parts are linked together. Everything has to come together rather than a dissociated as in disconnected collection of parts. Nothing should be disconnected. They should all be connected. They should all come together. Industry has a most crucial role to play in this new era of responsibility. Mainly, it is the industry. What a transformation would be effected if more businessmen shared the view of the chairman of DuPont, Mr. Edgar S. Woolard, who five years ago declared himself to be the company's, now check his designation, to be the company's chief environmental officer. Why the industries has to play a major role? Because now they have to take the lead. So he did that. He put himself as the title, he gave himself the title of chief environmental officer. He said, our continued existence as a leading manufacturer requires that we excel in environmental performance. We need to master, we need to really excel, we need to master in environmental performance. That also performance has to be really brought about. It has to be geared up. Of all the statements made by Margaret Thatcher during the years of her prime ministership, none has passed so decisively into the current coin of English usage as her felicitous words. What do you mean by the felicitous words? They are the most suitable, the well-framed, the well-chosen words. She put it up so beautifully. Just hear it. No generation has a freehold on this earth. It's not that this generation has a freehold. Oh, it's all yours. It's not the fact. That's not the case. All we have is a life tenancy. We have a life tenancy with a full repairing lease. We have a certain tenure. We are going to live here a particular number of years. Of course, we all have our own age uh, limits, but with a full repairing lease. You have that thing where you can actually repair it. You know, you can actually go according to it. In the words of Mr. Lester Brown, we have not inherited this earth from our forefathers. We did not get it from our ancestors. We have borrowed it from our children. This earth we are living on. It has not come to us from our ancestors. It is something that we have borrowed from our children. What is he trying to say is this is something that we are going to leave for our children. We are going to leave them with this. So literally it's like we are, it's theirs. It's now theirs. So we have literally borrowed it from them. We are going to use it but make sure that we don't damage it to an extent that the future generation has nothing left at all. They also have to meet their needs. So we have to leave the planet at least in that much condition that they don't suffer. It should not be the case. So, you know, instead of actually just keeping fixed deposits and stuff for your children, uh, for the children, people feel that we should keep and they have a, you know, a secured future. But right now, I think what you need to look at is you have to leave your planet. You have to give a more secured future by taking care of the planet first. That should be priority, right? And that brings us to the end of our chapter. It tells us the environment is where we all meet, where we all have a mutual interest 
it is the one thing all of us share. Lady Bird Johnson has put it so well in the quote. She says, this is one thing where we all meet. It's the environment. That is where we actually all come up to. We all have a mutual interest looking at this beautiful nature. It is that one thing that all of us share in common, right? So I guess you've got the chapter right. It is a lot to do about environment. I understand it was not a story, but at the same time, we learned a lot, didn't we? Yeah, so for the same, keep watching and keep learning.